morning guys it's march 27th and today's title is vision by personal character so i'll be in revelation chapter 4 and the verse of the day is 1 so i'll be reading out of my king james version i used to read out of the new living translation but now i'm back to king james uh but i use the new living translation study bible to read what it says about the verses sometimes it has a lot sometimes it don't but i'm going to be reading out of king james today and i'm going to read chapter four the throne that's all i'm going to read but we're going to be more hinting on the verse of the day which is the first verse okay chapter four eighty ninety six the throne after this i looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat was to look upon like a jasper and sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting. These men represent the entirety of the work of God as it pertains to believers, with no doubt a mixture of prophets and apostles. Clothed in white, raiment and they had on their heads crowns of gold and out of the throne proceeded lightning lightnings and thunderings of voices and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of god that those spirits this represents the totality and universality of the holy spirit the number seven is god's number denoting perfection So I read to verse 5. So 1 through 5. So let's see what this says. Chapters 4 and 5 record glimpses into Christ's glory. Hey, hold on, little man. Here we see into the throne room of heaven. God is on the throne and orchestrating all the events that John will record. The world is not spinning out of control. The God of creation will carry out its plans as Christ initiates the final battle with the forces of evil. John shows us heaven before showing us earth so that we will not be frightened by future events. The voice John had first heard that sounded like a trumpet blast was the voice of Christ. Four times in the book of Revelation, John says he was in the Spirit. It says in chapter 1, verse 10, chapter 4, verse 2, chapter 17, verse 3, and chapter 21, verse 10. This expression means that the Holy Spirit was giving him a vision, showing him situations and events he could not have seen with mere human eyesight. All true prophecy comes from God through the Holy Spirit. It says this in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. Who are these 24 elders? Because there were 12 tribes of Israel in the Old Testament and 12 apostles in the New Testament. The 24 elders in this vision probably represent all the redeemed of God for all time, both before and after Christ's death and resurrection. They symbolize all those both Jews and Gentiles, who are now part of God's family. The 24 elders show us that all the redeemed of the Lord are worshiping Him. In Revelation, lightning and thunder are connected with significant, or significant events in heaven. They remind us of the lightning and thunder at Mount Sinai when God gave the people His laws, Exodus 19.16. 
The Old Testament often uses such imagery to reflect God's power and majesty. Psalm 77, 18. The sevenfold Spirit of God is another name for the Holy Spirit. See also Zechariah chapter 4, 2-6, through six, where seven lamps, like the seven torches here, are equated with the one Spirit. Let's go to Zechariah real quick. Four, two, three, six. What, buddy? What? Watch. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Rich. Yeah, it's hard to find these books when they're so small. Let's see here. Yeah, 1501. There we go. So I said four, two through six, Zechariah four, two through six. Okay, so what do you see now, he asked. This is verse two. I'm going through six. I answered, I see a gold lamp stand with a bowl of oil on top of it. Around the bowl are seven lamps, each having seven spouts with wicks. And I see two olive trees, one on each side of the bowl. Then I asked the angel, What are these, my lord? What do they mean? Don't you know, the angel asked. No, my lord, I replied. Then he said to me, This is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel. It is not by force nor by strength, by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Nothing... Okay, so that's two through six. It's not by force, nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's armies. So it is by spirit, and and that that's how this this message of revelation was given through John. So, so we're gonna go to the verse of the day. And and what Jimmy Swagger says, or with all the theology and all the ministers he's spent, spoken to, and people who actually study this as a part of their career, he says that uh, this verse represents the time after the churches, or in other words, after the rapture, gives John the ability to see what is taking place there. It is actually the voice of Jesus harking back to Revelation. One ten, and this is after the rapture of the church. So let's go to one ten here. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet. So it's that's what Revelation one ten says. So we can receive messages by the Spirit, and we, the, 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 it's really, really important so we can grow with God. He gives us answers we need to be aware of. We got to be sound in mind and and spirit in all that we do. Be pure, like I was talking about yesterday. Got to be pure in the Lord. An elevated mood can only come out of an elevated habit of personal character. If in the externals of your life you live up to the highest you know, God will continually say, Friend, go up higher. The golden rule in temptation is go higher. When you get up higher, 
or get higher up, you face other temptations and characteristics. Satan uses the strategy of elevation and temptation, and God does the same, but the effect is different. When the devil puts you into an elevated place, he makes you screw your idea of holiness beyond what flesh and blood could ever bear. It is a spiritual acrobatic performance. You are just poised and dare not move. But when God elevates you by His grace into the heavenly places, instead of finding a pinnacle to cling to, you find a great tableland where it is easy to move. So let's find this great tableland where we can move with Christ. Compare this week in your spiritual history with the same week last year and see how God has called you up higher. We have all been brought to see from a higher standpoint. Never let God give you one point of truth, which you do not instantly live up to. Always work it out and keep it in, the, in light of it. So we got to work up to these things. Growth in grace is measured not by the fact that you have not gone back, but that you have an insight into where you are spiritually. You have heard God say, come up higher, not to you personally, but to the inside of your character. Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? God has to hide from us what he does until by personal character we get to the place where he can reveal it. Amen. That's how that's a lot of how spiritually I've grown through Christ and it's come with a lot of loss at times, but also with a lot of gaining doing that. Some of us just are given it. And I've talked about this before. Through life sometimes we just aren't given things. We got to work for them. Sometimes we have to learn from messing up. Sometimes we have to learn from doing good, and then you finally see it. But it's through the way that God the potter forms his pots. It's how, in Jeremiah, he talks about how he's going to forge your heart. And he's forging it in everything you do. So your heart's like metal. He's forging that metal. And he's making you into what what tools he needs to use for his kingdom and, and his army. We're a part of his army, and we got to stand on that foundation every morning. Pick up this word, you know, study. This is my most for his highest. It gives me a verse every day so I can study. Pick up this Bible every day to help me study. This is another study Bible. This is another study Bible. I got two of them. You know, I mean, if I can do it, you guys can do it too. When I started these videos, I didn't do this to like make people think oh he's giving his life to Christ I already have my life given to Christ but the more I read the more I realized that I, I am uh, I am an ambassador of Christ and it's my duty to pass along these words of Christ to other Christians and also other brothers and sisters that doesn't believe like we do you know and that's that's my duty and and you know I didn't I, I want I want this message to be reached out to people that don't don't have that message, especially with the COVID going on right now. So many churches have been affected by that, but we're still standing strong. I also read these messages because it helps me too, so I can read too. We got to study, so we know, and I still got a lot to study. I I I don't really know the Old Testament as well as I should. I'm 27. I've wasted a lot of my years away not studying. I know a lot of the New T Testament, but I need to learn more. But the more we learn in this word, the more we can apply it to our lives to be better people. So whenever we are in a situation, we can, you know, the more we study and stand on God's foundation, we can go back to that and it's like it's like our tools out in real life spiritually so we can make decisions when we're confronted to make the wisest decision. And, and it, sometimes we screw up, but it's okay. we got to let our spirit guide us. Like the spirit guided John here to get this message of revelation. The future. You know, which, I mean, 
you got to real to really understand revelation you got to really know the word like really know the word and this is word has been passed down from thousands of years ago and you know there's a lot of things that have changed through time but there's a lot of leadership things in the world today it's kind of the same you know the rich and the poor and power against evil and, and good forces and all that i mean it's still there but it's probably grown a lot worse since then because we are going to the times of tribulation we might be in the times of tribulation i have no idea but a lot i hear a lot of elderly people i go or elders church elders say that we are so you know when they say something i, I really listen so it's the least i could do is read this stuff and get it out there but by us doing this, we're showing God we love Him. We want to learn more. And we want to walk this everlasting life with Him. And that's what it's about. Because this, once, once you give your life over, you can better yourself every day for His cause. And let's save some lives, you know. Save some souls. Because it does say, He doesn't say like exactly what I'm going to say. Like your souls work, uh, worth more than the world but it says like wouldn't your soul be worth more than earthly things and what he's telling us about earthly things they don't last forever and that that's pretty much the context of what's that what happens there and uh he's right this body is just flesh inside we got a spirit that spirit will move on li live on if we allow it to so Right here we read this morning, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard. So this door is going to be opened. Come up hither, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. So he opened the door up, open for John, and he went up there to see some things. You know, John the Beloved went up there. He was cast away. They said he was in a cave or something. And, you know, he's by himself. Had to be real lonely. But he wasn't lonely because he had God with him all the time. And he learned, he, he talked to God all the time. So he, he definitely had a relationship with God. And that and we, we can have that relationship with God everywhere we go to. But you got to allow him to be there. Anyways, guys, God bless you. I'm going to get off of here. But I hope you guys like this message. We was in Revelation today and we talked about the throne. So, anyways, hope you guys have an amazing day. It's another blessed day He's given us. Let us stand on our foundation. Let us put on our armor. And let's encourage and uplift everybody we see with a good smile. And let our spirit be bright lights in this world of darkness. God bless you.